All right, y'all. Look, since we just did Dust to Dawn, I'm going to tell y'all now Twilight real quick. That's very important. I hope I have enough time. All right, when we talking now Twilight, you talking about the underworld. That's the story of the real underworld right there, I guess. And I'm going to tell you from saying I guess in a way because it's tied in with the key of Solomon. I'm going to put them both in this real quick. Well, this all started like around the same time the eclipse came. And when this eclipse took place, it was first a visit from the four horsemen who I saw in clouds when I was recording the eclipse. And when I went home, they was the first that I seen that came as like orbs, blue orbs or whatever. So as I'm watching it, I'm like, no, this can't be. Because I'm seeing four little orbs and they're coming from like deep within my wall like if it was a parallel universe coming through. So I'm like, nah, but as it got closer and bigger, they started galloping, galloping, you could see it is. But one came forward faster than the rest of them and the others was in the background, which I focused on more because you know, you ain't gonna let nothing sneak up on you. So following him, he came and we did what I had to do to push him through and bring him on, onto this side. So now, once he come through, hello, how you doing? Hello. And once he came through to this side now, the first was, um, he was like on like a great big black horse. He was on a big black horse. And this horse stood with him on it when it came through my parallel side of the wall, about to the top of my ceiling. So I'm standing there like, what the fuck is this? It started off as an orb and you see it coming like a galloping colt as it comes through. And when it comes through, it's the man sit, sitting on a horse in my, in, my living, in my living room. And you can see a silhouette of it. It's total darkness, but you see the silhouette of it. And so he's just there looking at you. I'm like, what the fuck is this? But to me, I don't see him just as the man on the horse. I know the man with the hat on. You see, that's the man with the hat. If you Google him, I told you about him. So I'm like, now... I've been through so much in my life with this man in the hat that kept giving me sleep paralysis. I was angry. I was more mad. Like, I finally confront this motherfucker. It's not like I'm dreaming. I'm not asleep. I'm standing up. We're both standing up face to face looking at each other. Because if I didn't tell you in the last video, like I said, with this eye upgrade and all this stuff, you can see into the magenta spectrum, integral spectrum, and a few other spectrum. Plus, when fear is induced in you, you have this thing you could push your eyes or whatever and see shapes in the clearness of this light. Predator, the movie Predator, that's real. So you can see the outlines of them. And so that's what I did. And I'm seeing him, me and him is looking at each other. So by now, you know, I'm a Jedi in this world. And so I know to talk to him telepathically. So, you know, he know what's going on inside of me, all of them do. So I'm like, you know what, you know I just want to jump on you, but the only one thing I want to know, what's going on and who are you? And no, no, as a matter of fact, I didn't say who he was, I said, who am I? And that's when everything turned into something else. You know, he projected who I was, and I'm like, oh my God, I don't believe it. Really, I was shocked. And with that, he took me now astrally, because you could project your astral body. It's like a ghost body, a Casper body, or a dragon, whatever image you form it into. But I don't use my imagination. It forms itself from experiences you've done had in the real world. You make an avatar of who you are in that world. So now I'm riding with him, and he goes back through the wall, and we go through the mountains, all these different places, and literally, he takes me to um, meet Set. Once I met Set, everything changed. You know, it was first, I'm like, nah, this can't be real. You know, and so once I met Set, Set now, I broke the meditation. About later on that evening, I went into the second meditation. 
it got a, a whole nother story to do with the dragon, which I'm not going to be able to go into, but I'm going to tell the stories of the dragon so that y'all understand the significance, what it means, because it is the portal, the dragon eating its tail. It's everything. It's in your womb. It's a, it's a cell. It's, a, it's any cell. That's a portal. But anyways, so now the second time I go into meditation, same day, it start now, uh, the dragon come and visit me and it literally come inside me. I was so afraid because it was like a 747 coming into me. I never saw it that big before and it just overwhelmed me and just, I almost passed out. That energy had me shaking. But anyways, upon this now, it was like <laughs> the weirdest shit in the world happened. I literally now, when I go into meditation, I go downstairs, it's like I'm in my body, but I go down, it's like I'm going down like this. And I go downstairs into like a pitch, pitch darkness, but it's not dark down there. For some reason, it's, the darkness is not dark. So you're like in an infrared spectrum. And once you get down there, it's like you're in space, you start even free falling. You free fall like if a balloon in space, you touch it, it's gonna go in any direction. So that is the craziest thing because upon going there, I was just free falling and it looked like my fear controlled the direction I was going in. So now <clears throat> I see my destination, the orb like, but I don't know how to go. I don't know how to go. I'm still falling back or just free falling, you could say, or floating. And I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? This should feel scary as fuck. So upon that note, it seemed like some type of entity or demon came and wrapped his arm around me and is pulling me deeper into the darkness. And my heart is beating fast and I feel like I'm going. And I'm trying to tell him to get the fuck off of me, but I can't, I can't. And I just implode into myself and I pop back up here. So I'm like, whoa. So we're here out of fear. So I can still feel myself floating in my body though, like something ain't right. So I jumped back into the meditation and showing up, dude still had his arm around me or whatever, but it wasn't no, it wasn't like a, a dark shadow being no more. It was like an image of like Tupac or whatever. And he's like, what, what happened, you all right? So I'm like, get the fuck off of me. And I pushed him away. And then I just was like, take me home. And I floated back up now and um, back into my body and it stopped that wavy feeling. That was like my first little visit in the underworld where I wasn't just observing it like a um, third person shooter game like I'm in. Um, what's that one? Y'all know what I'm talking about. Medal of Honor, one of them. I'm saying the old ass one. They got better ones that I could use. But you know, I'm not thinking about that right now. I'm trying to stick with the story. You know, but anyways, so once I was able to know that it's real now, I'm not just running around as a third person, my consciousness is involved. I stopped meditating and chill for a minute, but I'm going to continue the story in a minute. Beginning of the Twilight, part one.